Hmm. Um, somebody says, can I crack cat in in eight months? Is that crack in eight eight months? Is that even possible? Raj, so what do you think? Um, I very much think it is possible. It is? I think, I think, I think. I mean, eight months is sufficient time to crack this exam. I'm going to have a stab at saying how one should go about trying to do it. All right, you guys, learn from the big man. So I've made this big promise. I've tried to say, look, let's create a plan for cracking it in, um, in eight months. Hopefully it works. Um, I'm going to think about it very structurally, like the, how my brain uh, works about it. So I'm going to say, hey, nice, we're going to try to do this. We need to prepare ourselves for quant. We need to prepare ourselves for LRDI. We need to prepare ourselves for verbal. And then we need to prepare ourselves for the overall thing. So and further into this, I'm going to break this into, hey, what do I learn? How do I take stock? When do I take stock? Take stock, consolidate, revise, revisit, see where I stand, assess, all of that I'm going to put in one bracket, one chunk. Right? So for quant, LRDI and verbal. Right? So let's have a go at it. Quant, the magic word in my head, is sequence. Right? So the absolute crucial part is sequence. What do I mean by that? We're going to cover a lot of topics. What do I start with? What do I move on to? And then how do I progress through the entire content? So very simple. When you're learning, start with arithmetic. Then go to either algebra or geometry. After that, do the other. What do I mean by the other? If you've done algebra, go to geometry. If you've done geometry, go to algebra, not rocket science. Final part number systems plus miscellaneous for me the magic bullet here is a sequence in which you do why because arithmetic forms the bedrock of quantum and so you cover fundamental topics topics without without having comfort in which you cannot go on to algebra or, or, or number systems you cover about 40 to 50 percent of the questions and you have a route to 92, 93 percentile. You qualify with this, you cover enormous fundamental ground with this, you are covered for a big part of the exam with this. Do not go to the tougher topics, the more mathematical topics without covering the basics. Right? What is included in arithmetic? Percentages, profit and loss, ratios and proportions, mixtures and allegations, speed, time, distance, races, pipe systems and work and time, averages, little bit of exponential logarithm and progressions. These come in arithmetic and algebra, but we can count them as either one. Fundamental simple linear equation solving, simple interest component, it's about 10 to 12 topics. Um, they cover half the syllabus or half the questions, not half the syllabus, much less than half the syllabus, and a root to 92, 93, 93 percentile. And what's sitting inside algebra is building on linear equations, quadratic equations, inequalities, functions, Progressions and exponents and logarithm with variables thrown in polynomials. Five, six topics. You, you, you increase the level of difficulty slowly, starting from linear and quadratic equations. What's its center? Geometry, basic geometry, Euclidean geometry, which is basically circles, triangles, polygons, all of that. Then trigonometry, mensuration, coordinate geometry. What's its center? Number system, HCF, LCM, number of factors, sum of factors, factorial, reminders, all of that. And then permutation probability comes here and miscellaneous stuff like set theory can sit here, here or here, put in any box, get comfortable with it, you're good to go. And so what happens in the revision part? How do you take stock? We'll have a step, simple one step lag to what I'm learning. Do not, do not make this mistake of revising at the end of it all. And don't have this funder of, I will finish arithmetic, geometry, algebra, and then I'll start revising from percentages and profit and loss. It simply doesn't work. Ideas fly out of your head. And then if you, if you look at percentages four months after you learned it for the first time, you get this weird feeling that, look, I don't even feel like I learned this once. 
and you're caught in this loop where you're questioning everything that you've learned. And so revisit aggressively. You have to learn in a spiraling model. Learn, next topic, next topic, revisit. Add one more layer to it. Revise, revise, add a new topic. Revise everything. Keep doing like that. Your, your subsequent iterations will become rock star quick. Back yourself on day one to say in day one, if I'm taking six days to finish a small topic like simple interest component interest, day 100, I'll be able to revise six topics in six days because I'm revisiting them and I get more comfortable with mathematics, numbers, everything. And so, so keep that in mind. One step lag, whatever you learn here, four weeks later, you should be revisiting that. And so when you're doing this, you should do practice questions to consolidate ideas and cat level questions to benchmark yourself. What do I mean by practice questions? You need to factorize quadratic equations. You need to know that 25% is 1 by 4. Do a bunch of questions to automate those processes. Cat level questions, okay, have I got it in me to step up for what is required at the, at the level of the exam? That's the requirement. Um, automatically, quant dominates the early part of your preparation because without doing a bunch of these topics, you can't jump into LRDI uh, because percentages and ideas of ratios will get tested again here. And so we have to do a little bit more of quant. Quant has more syllabus to cover. Technically speaking, LRTI and VRC, there is zero syllabus. What do I mean by that? You can go today and attempt LRTI and VRC. There's not a knowledge gap that you have. You might find the passages tough to read. You might find the puzzle really tricky. You may have no practice in it. But there isn't a chunk of theory that you, you need to have finished to even approach that. Without knowing sign 45, you cannot approach a particular question in trigonometry. Whereas there's no such knowledge requirement here. Keep that in mind, something to keep in mind. So, so what do I do with LRDI? What is my what is the what is the plan? The key word here, the most important thing that I'll I'll keep in mind here, the ball game here, is right. LRDI is not about cracking syllabus, it's not about cracking templates. It's about figuring out ways of getting better at newer templates. So what will I do? Uh, I'll want to do simple syllabus, basic syllabus is what I want to do first, which is simple pie charts and graphs and seating arrangement and, and, and all of that with a complete awareness and knowledge that as far as the exam is concerned, there's going to be no question of this type. I'm going to get questions from simple pie chart. That era has done. That era was done by 2013-14. Pie charts may feature, but it's not going to be the ball game. And But if, without doing that, you can't grab LRDI. And the next part in LRDI is super crucial, mind you. And this is what I would probably be insist on doing. Once you're covered with the basic ground, and hit previous year CAT questions. Little unconventional, little different from what we've been saying for years, but do this because in LRDI, wrapping our head around what is this section all about, sometimes very difficult. You're preparing in small islands. You don't know. Sometimes you look at a puzzle and it's impossible to solve. Your sense of what is a cat style question? How difficult might it be? Is it worthwhile doing it if it takes 30 minutes, 25 minutes? Is it is it's going to be what if it is what is the level of difficulty? The puzzle I might do and that I'm trying today on April 17th, is it tougher than what I can expect in cat or is it far simpler? Where do I stand? What is this mechanism? That is super crucial. So CAT 17, 18, 2017, 18, 19 are simpler. 21, 22, 23, 24 are tougher. 24 being the simplest of these. Pick some one year and do a couple of slots, either here or here, preferably both. And so why I'm saying do only one slot is you may want to save up these to take them as a real mocks for later on. Okay? But there are 12 papers here. And six papers here, including 2020 will be eight papers. There's lots and lots and lots of papers. Have that. So don't, don't, not 12, 15. I think 2020 also had a three session paper. So lots and lots of two hour papers available for you. And so, and six here. And so, so you don't have to save up 15 of them to do as mocks. You can take the 2020 or 21 mala, take the LRD, I think, take puzzles, solve all of them. Don't be particular about speed, don't care about speed, but do that. Do 10, 15 sets of LRDI puzzles, even if they take you an hour per set, to get a very clear idea of 
what is the level of difficulty here? Do basics, do cat level, jump. It's like saying I want to learn swimming, jump into the pool. You can learn strokes and breathing and floating and with the thing and with all of that. But jump, 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 jump. Swim in the deep waters for at least a spell of three weeks, four weeks, where you're just trying, then see the solution, then you'll get a hang of. You may not get a hang of what is the plan for this, but you'll definitely get a hang of what is this about. I know lots and lots of students go through LRDI without getting this intuitive sense of what is CAT LRDI about till very late. The best way to get that is to jump in and do a few actual CAT sets. Don't prepare, jump in, do. Blame it on me if it doesn't work for you. Try, try, write me a stinker email. I'm up for all of it, but do some very basic LRDI, which is completely irrelevant from the, for the level of difficulty of the actual exam. Know what this is, jump in and do a few cat questions. After which, do lots and lots and lots of different sets and go through the solutions in detail. Do not time yourself. Typically, this should take about four weeks. This should take four weeks. This is everything after that. This arithmetic will take eight weeks. These two will take four weeks each. And then the other one also takes four weeks. This will take four weeks. A four month window give or take to cover the syllabus, which can get deferred or pushed based on how much you're revising. That's a broad timeline. So here again, four weeks, four weeks, then 12, 10 weeks of this. And so this is your broad idea in terms of timeline. Let's go to verbal. Verbal, the, the entire thing sits and rests on reading. Jatin and I both are big fans of what we call as leisure reading or passive reading. And so passive reading builds brain muscle to read without getting tired. It's an absolutely crucial skill set in your life and uh, definitely a crucial skill set for a cat. Back when I was preparing for a cat, I had the reading habit. I read, used to read a ton, not reasonably high number of novels, off and on, off and on. But I was not a natural reader. I had to grind through some novels if, if I didn't take to them. And so. And, and I did a lot of uh, passage reading. In my job, I was a research report writer. I needed to do a tons, tons of reading. I had to read for about 3-4 hours every day. That's when my entertainment became reading and it's been there for, for a long time now. Now I'm doom scrolling way more than I should be. But you have to figure out ways of reading being the thing that fills your entertainment gap. It can be fiction, non-fiction, it could be sports, it could be movies, reviews, it doesn't matter. Anything apart from Twitter or Instagram things can be counted as reading. And so, but reading is the absolute bedrock for verbal. You should say, look, my verbal preparation, I'm running a, not a track like this horizontally, I'm running like a big vertical track, where I say, reading in my own ugly handwriting, but for one hour per day, every day, starting now till the day of cat. You're going to an exam, read and go. If it's the first slot, read the previous evening. If it's the third slot, read on that day morning and go. Reading comfort, reading momentum, reading without really getting out of bed, reading very naturally are absolute crucial skill sets for this exam. How do you prepare? For verbal, it's about hitting some number of RCs per week. In April, you probably start with two per week. In May, you go to five per week, one per day. By the time this is April, this is May. By the time you are in June, you should be doing one to two per day. Apart from reading, apart from reading for fun, apart from reading longer articles for hanging in there. Right? After you have done this for April, May, June, by the time you are into July, you push for the VA track as well, para jumble and, 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 and para summary and some parts of critical reasoning, sentence arrangement, sentence elimination, which is odd man out, all of that. They sit here. You can do this ahead of this. That's up to you. Not an issue. This is not negotiable. Absolutely. And so this forms your bedrock. And then slowly you get momentum. RC is two thirds of the paper. 
So reading comprehension needs to be amped up more and more consistently. But you tack on verbal, whether you put verbal preparation in June and RC in July and both simultaneously in August or the other way around, that I leave to you. And so this is the broad theme I would hit upon. Beyond this, on top of this thing, overall, we'll set a mock schedule. You should do April one or two mocks, May two to three mocks. By the time you are in June, you should be looking to do one mock per week, give or take. By the time you are in July, it should be one mock per week, amped up to two per week by the time you hit end of September. So by July, you are taking one per week. By September, it goes up to two per week. And so that's your mock schedule which is overlaid on this. This gives you a sense of what is it that you are preparing for. So there's a part for learning, the part for taking stock, especially for quant. For LRDI, the learning part is very basic. Taking stock is previous year question. Nothing like that and amp it up and put it very early. Don't do, don't hold up previous year question because getting a sense of what this LRDI about is very important. And I don't want all of you to do this in September. I want you to do it in April, May. And verbal read, 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 read your verbal ability will automatically go up. Actively read for 20 minutes, half an hour when you are practicing for RCs, when you are reading long articles from perhaps Parath's reading list. Passively read, lay back and have fun reading. Read without, without being all switched on. Very important to, to read without getting drained, without listing down and remembering and thinking about what is the what is the central theme and what is the key summary and the four crucial points and none of that. All the things that we guys will teach you as to take a list of takeaways when you read a passage, stick up in on all of them and then read and read and read and read and read. It will automatically benefit you when you are switching on and reading. The idea that you have read tons of passages without worrying about tracking everything will massively help you in the few passages where you have to actually do them. The mock schedule stays outside of this. Eat well, sleep well, drink plenty of water. Do all of this, all of these things, all of these things with a, with a freakishly big smile. Don't grit through it, grin through it. And so one letter makes a huge difference. And so you you, you can't say, ah, ek aur bar kuch to karke rehna yaar, pata nahi kya ho raha hai. You say, look, I have to read a passage, solve a puzzle, what's not to like? LRDA puzzles are lovely things. I know we, if I didn't have my job, I would, and I had a free time, I had tons of free time. I would, I would say, look, I want to keep my brain active, so I want to solve one or two puzzles per day. I love reading, so I'll read for a couple of hours a day, books, novels, magazines. I like math. I want to learn one new idea of math every day and solve a bunch of non-routine questions that are challenging. Four or five hours of this, and I want to play for a couple of hours. That's how I fill my day. And so, so it sounds like. All of this comes under cat preparation. So I'm a little crazy. I enjoy this. I understand that not everybody will be wired like how I am. But there is a mechanism in all of our heads where we have to create ideas for saying, okay, let me embrace what I'm doing and jump in and start, start liking it. Take every effort to do it like that. And, and jump in and say, look, this is fun. And I'm telling you, cat preparation is a load of fun. And it, uh, it immeasurably improves you. In tangible ways, you become more numerate, you become more articulate, for sure, 100%. The way you speak would just dram be dramatically different. You'll have more clarity in your head. Uh, and you get better and better at handling pressure. You'll become a, a clutch performer. Actually, I'm getting Gen Z lingo very well. So you'll become a, someone who, who can handle pressure, who can step up uh, when, 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 when the going is tough. All of that will happen during the course of your CAT preparation. Not necessarily CAT or MBA or entrance, but CAT preparation, it will work. And so do this whole thing with a big, big freaking smile on your face. Best wishes. Hush.